Heyo Super Squid Squad, Sam here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some of my favorite nighttime stages in Splatoon 2. Not just normal stages, we're going to be looking at Splatfest stages. As you guys probably know, during the Splatfest battle, all the stages get this night theme which is really cool looking. I like these reskins a lot since they're what makes Splatfest so special. Over the past three Splatfests, I've been gathering footage, and without further ado, here are my favorites. Starfish main stage is one of those stages that launched alongside Splatoon 2. And while the map itself has undergone some maintenance in the past to make it more balanced, I still really like the idea of a seaside concert stage. And nothing's cooler than a concert stage at dusk with lasers and, uh, what else, uh, glowy concert triangles? This stage also has two cool visual effects, wind and salt water. Now, the wind effect is pretty easy to see, it's just everything kind of blowing in the wind. But, what I mean by the salt water effect is these little distortions that form on the game camera. They look like droplets of water, and as far as I know, this thing really majorly happens near the ocean. It's a really small detail that's also in the daytime stage, but it really adds a lot to the feel at night. Manta Maria is one cool looking stage during the day, but during the night it's a sight to behold. In Starfish main stage, you've got the sea to the left and the city to the right, but on Manta Maria, you're higher up, so you can actually see both those things. In some stages, mostly the indoor ones, it just looks like the devs turned down some brightness settings and added confetti. But the Manta Maria goes that extra distance beyond just dimming lights with, with stuff like the wind and salt effect again, but this time they're both turned up. I also like the way the metal is a little reflective because it's wet, and the small pieces of something tied to the rigging blowing in the wind, and the way the water is a little more active. In all, this stage just really blends nicely with the night theme. New Albacore Hotel is normally a pretty chill hotel, but it really comes alive at night. The first thing I always see coming into the stage is the fireworks, and while there are fireworks in other Splatfest stages, I think they look really nice here. The water in the pool also has this really cool teal glow, and did I mention the jellies? They're so cute! And the hanging lights, which are normally turned off during the day, are turned on and give everything a nice texture. With the stone and wood on the floor, too, this stage just lends itself really nicely to Splatfest. The Reef is another stage that launched with Splatoon 2, but it's a bit more special. The night theming is more subtle than at New Albacore Hotel, taking place at dusk instead of closer to midnight. It's just enough to give everything a glow effect, and it makes sense in the context of the stage, too. You see, the Reef is supposed to be a gathering place for Inklings, with shops and all sorts of other stuff, but most of the time, places like that close at night, so naturally, the Splatfest battles here would have to take place earlier. It's the same thing with Wahoo World. But since New Albacore is a hotel, it doesn't close, so Splatfest battles can be later at night. I'm not complaining though, just take a look at that sky, it's incredible. The surrounding city and shops also have a really cool look to them. Just like with New Albacore, the rock on the bridge looks gorgeous too. So before we go to the number one spot, here are a few stages that didn't make the cut, but are still a uh, cut above the rest. And now, on to the number one spot. And our number one spot goes to Skipper Pavilion for being so hecking beautiful I want to live here. It's got fireworks, it's got cool surfaces, it's got plant. Also, you know, the lanterns, like everywhere, those, those are neat too. Plus the dark outlines of other buildings against the sky, the rocks in the water, the water itself, honestly, there's so much cool stuff here. The temple itself just looks so huge from the bottom of the stage. It's, it's awesome. It's pretty calm here too, and yes, I realize that that's the point of the stage, is that it's a temple and all. It's supposed to be calm, but still, this stage just nails it. And that goes along with it being one of my favorite maps to begin with. All in all, I think most of the outdoor Splatfest stages look really great. Well, the indoor ones are... eh. Yeah. That said, I still really enjoy being able to experience one of my favorite games in a whole new way with Splatfest. On that note, sorry I haven't been uploading, streaming, or being active at all. Oof. My goal is to get three uploads out in a row, and then I'll try to start streaming again, and we'll go from there. YouTube still means a lot to me, and I really want to find my way and figure out what kind of content I want to make and on what schedule. But yeah, on that slightly depressing note, uh, bye, and until next time, I am Super Squid Jump blasting off again. Bye!